Hey, work from homers, Adam Schrader here. We love bringing you this podcast and thousands of you have proven that it's been helpful for you. But since time and online storage space aren't free, Narration and I wanted to come to you personally to ask for your financial support through Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash work from home show and help support the show. And we appreciate your support at any amount you choose. That's patreon.com slash work from home show. Thanks for your support. Let's get to the show. Forced to work from home by your employer? Laid off or feeling depressed at home? Do you want to make money working from anywhere? We'll show you how to do it from your couch. It's time for another episode of the Work From Home Show. Coming to you from their homes in Austin, Texas and Tampa, Florida. Here are your hosts, Adam and Naresh. Hey everybody, welcome to the Work From Home Show. Shout out to all our homies, homeboys, homegirls, home trans, all the Work From Homers out there. Today we have Jeff Fry on our show. He is a retired Major League Baseball player and player agent with Fry McCann Sports. Jeff Fry, thank you so much for joining Adam and me on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I want to start with your career. You went from Major League Baseball player, I believe, straight to representing players as an agent. So can you talk to us about that transition from practicing pretty much every day, playing almost every day during the season, and retiring with a good nest egg. You could have done nothing. You could have just hung out at the beach. Why did you decide to become a player agent, and how did you make that transition so quickly? Yeah, well, I, wanted to, um, I wanted to stay in the game in some aspect, and I was actually approached by some people you know, to see if I wanted to get into scouting. And uh, when I asked the question how many days a week I would have to be at the park, and they said six or seven, that, that was immediately a no for me. <laughs> um, yeah, I, had eight. Some, <laughs> I had some opportunities to get into coaching, uh, but yeah, I would have had to gone back to the minor leagues and rode on buses and been gone from home, and I had small children. So I thought you know, I had the opportunity through a friend to um, get into the representation business and uh, – you know, I jumped at it. It was less than a year after my retirement. I became an agent, and it just so happens that one of my old teammates called me right out of the gate and hired me. And within uh, 48 hours, I got him an invitation to big league spring training, and he played nine years in the big leagues after that. And that's that was Darren Oliver. That's a pretty impressive journey. So, how do you for continue that network? Though, I mean, obviously, you know, Darren Oliver is a solid name to have going on, but you know, how do you go into the negotiations with the team and know and like learn that side of the business? Because it's completely different from playing. So how do you what's the difference between your interaction with the team and the contract as a player versus your interaction with the team and sorting the contract out as an agent? Well, I mean, I did a lot of research. I had had some help from other agents that were friends of mine that kind of, you know, walked me through a lot of the stuff. And, and I had already established a lot of the relationships from my playing career. And I mean, it was easy. If you're a baseball guy, you sh start showing up at high school and college baseball games and the scouts are there. A lot of the guys knew who I was or we have met pretty quickly and hit it off. So uh, I think it's probably refreshing to the scouts to have to deal with somebody who understands what they're doing. And as opposed to somebody who never really played you know, a lot of a lot of the agents are attorneys, so they don't really have those relationships that I had right away. And the contracts are pretty easy. You just, you know, you just find comparable players and see what their age and and um, their accomplishments in the game and what they've signed for, and you just kind of go off of that. Jeff, I'm going to ask you a quick series of questions so our listeners can better understand who you are and what you've accomplished. How many years did you play in the big leagues? Uh, just over nine years. Nine years and 15 days, to be exact. How how much time did you spend in the minor leagues? Well, I spent altogether 15 years in professional baseball. So I guess... Uh, About six years in the minors. And it's not really, though, because it was like I went back for a couple months up to the big leagues. I went back for a couple months. I think it's closer to five years altogether. 
Got it. And how many teams did you play for? And what would you say were like your if if you were not that you are a Hall of Fame player, but if you were inducted into the Hall of Fame, like which would be your top teams? Okay, yeah, I'm definitely not a Hall of Fame player. So we could just get that out of there. Um, well, I played for the Texas Rangers, drafted by the Rangers, went to the Red Sox, played for the Rockies and the Blue Jays, and also played for um, the Cincinnati Reds and um, the Houston Astros in the minor leagues. So six teams all together. Um, the best part of my career was probably with the Red Sox, so some if somebody called one day and um, there were no other players alive and they wanted to induct me in the Hall of Fame, it would probably be as a Red Sox. And did you go to college first or did you go straight to the minors out of high school? Yeah, I had, uh, went to college for four years, two years at Carl Albert Junior College in eastern Oklahoma. And then I went to two years at southeastern Oklahoma State NAIA school in Durant, Oklahoma, and actually went to a Texas Rangers tryout camp after my, my last season at Southeastern with a teammate's invitation. Benny Culver going to go to the tryout camp. I went in his place, had the day of my life, and ended up getting signed. Oh, so you didn't get drafted. You, you got it through a tryout. No, no, I mean, I went to the tryout, and um, they told me to go home and get ready that they were going to draft me, and they drafted me in the 30th round. Wow, that's awesome. And then when you transitioned to player agent, you said Darren Oliver was your first signing. That was a while ago because Darren Oliver pitched, I believe. He pitched way back when I was much younger. Um, so you've been doing this for a while. Yeah, I've been doing it for 20 years. Uh, I start, I became an agent in 2000 and 2003, maybe the end of 2002. And, and you know, it's funny, Darren Oliver and I were teammates together in the minor leagues and the major leagues. And uh, at the end of my career, I'm at right into being an agent. And he was with Scott Boris at the time. And Scott Boris was not really giving him the love that he needed because Darren was kind of seemed like his career was maybe winding down, but he wasn't ready to give up. And so he gave me a call. And, um, you know, 48 hours later, he had, had a job with the Rockies. Poaching from Scott Boris to start. I love it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty impressive thing to put on the resume for other uh, – for other players, for sure. But you have your Save the Game initiative, and I was scrolling through some of it, and I have to admit, I mean, I baseball to me is the greatest sport known to mankind. Um, I watch it all the time. I played it as a kid. Um, obviously, it has some uh, some issues going on with it, and you know, there's the what's happening between the players and the owners. Obviously, is not a good relationship over the years. But in terms of the actual game itself, I mean. We've seen a massive shift in the last 10 years or so towards analytics, towards, you know, paying people as, you know, you know the whole service time manipulation and all of that fun stuff. Um, how do you start the process of saving the game and getting people watching again, getting more kids playing again? What's the first step? I think we have to get baseball people back running the game. And because they understand they're the ones who can see that this is not a good product on the field. And we need to get back to playing um, the game the way they used to play it, with situational hitting, moving runners, bunning, stealing bases. That's action. We need action in the game. And it's, you know, the way the game has turned now with the three true outcomes of a homer, walk, and strikeout, there's just not much action in the game. And there's like 2.5 home runs a game in a three hour game. So about every hour and 15 minutes, something exciting happens. And, and it's just, it's hard to watch. And, and when a lot of my old teammates and guys that I played against can't watch a three hour baseball game, that should tell you that something's wrong with it. Can you tell us, so save the game U S the, the website is save the game us.com. It's an organization, uh, or Save the Game is, is the organization that you started. Are, are you the like founder of this organization? And uh, what are you, on a grassroots level, how are you actually making change? I mean, it's one thing to say we need to get baseball guys back into front offices, but what exactly are you doing to, to make that happen? Well, I didn't start it. It was a guy named Kevin Gallagher who wrote a book 
teach your kid to hit so they don't quit. And he sent me the book, and I really liked it. It's basically a way that um, parents can go in the backyard with their kids and, and read this book, and it'll teach them basic a basic way to teach your kids how to hit, to make contact, a more flatter, a swat, a flatter swing and hitting line drives and ground balls. And I love the idea. So Kevin mentioned to me that he had this idea about save the game and partnered with um, Pat Geegan. And they asked me if I wanted to participate and I said, yes. And so, you know, our goal is to, is to, you know, get an audience with major league baseball with the, commissioner's office and just you know try and help them partner with them and say listen this is why the fans don't want to watch your game and this is why especially the older generation a lot of them are turning away from the game completely and if we don't keep young kids invested in this game and learning to love the game like we all did we're going to lose our audience in 10 to 15 years and so we just want to help them because i think it's what has become of the game with the analytics and all the data and all this research stuff, it's just ruining the product on the field. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of, you know, growing the game, I mean, in the latest collective bargaining agreement, you know, they implemented the um, international, um, you know, the international draft that, you know, pr- probably something along those lines needed to happen because, I mean, there's a lot of sketchy things going on internationally to you know get players you know saying they're younger than they are saying they're older than they are i mean all sorts of things but how a lot of the concern around it is that it's going to kill the number of people playing internationally as well so what are your thoughts on if that's actually going to happen and if it does start happening how do we save the game not just in the u.s but continue to grow it abroad as part of the collective bargaining agreement, they agreed to, I think, by July 25th, 25th to um, figure out the situation with the international draft. They haven't actually agreed upon it yet. And I, I think we need an international draft. If you look at the way it's structured right now with our amateur draft, okay, our kids in the United States have to go through the draft system. Oh, yeah. There's a complete disconnect between... U.S. I mean, you're at a massive disadvantage at the moment being a U.S. Yes. citizen. Yeah. How can that be when it's our national pastime? OK, so how can it be fair that Bobby Witt Jr., the first or second best player in the country, and he can sign for seven million bucks, but some Cuban prospect can defect to Mexico and come sign a five year, 50 million dollar contract in the major leagues as a rookie? How is that fair? And so what I think the problem is, and I'm pretty sure this, I'm right with this, is there's a lot of powerful agents that get a lot of these international players, you know, the, the best, the Shohei Otanis, the best players who post themselves from Japan and places like this for the best players that come from Cuba over to, our, to the United States. And so the best agents are not the best necessarily, but the, the more powerful agents who recruit these international players stand to lose a lot of money if there's an international draft. I want to go back and talk about being an agent because I don't think people fully understand the day-to-day life of an agent, uh, especially an agent like a Scott Boris versus a, you know, a smaller agent. And I've, I've talked to some agents before who it's almost like they're part-time. They represent, you know, four or five players, in the NFL or the NBA or Major League Baseball, a few minor league players, a few international players, but they have all these other side businesses, you know, real estate, financial advising, et cetera. So can you tell us a little bit about your day-to-day? Are you all in on the MLB player agent stuff? Are you constantly traveling? Are you working from home? Are you doing all your calls on Zoom and contracts via email? Just give us more insight. No, it, it, not at all. <laughs> I mean, 20 years ago when I first got into it, I mean, I was going out to the ballpark three or four times a day and just trying to build a big client base. And um, I mean, it was kind of exciting at first. And then now I just basically, if if someone sends me a referral, someone refers me to parents of an amateur player or a player reaches out to me, that's basically how I get clients now. And I'm doing so many other things with my 
with my Shigon movement, I was just hired as a brand ambassador by Rotor Systems USA, a company here in Grapevine, Texas. So that's taking up most of my time now. And, uh, you know, I have a few hobbies mixed in there, golf, playing golf, going fishing and hunting. And yeah, I don't really, it's not a 24 seven job for me. Like it used to be. It's not even a 40 hour a week job for me. Um, you know, when you have a couple clients, baseball players generally are low maintenance. I don't have to talk to him every day and ask why he struck <laughs> out three times, you know, or say, man, you're killing us. You're, you know, you're not getting any hits. You just don't do that or you won't have clients for very long. That sounds pretty cool. That sounds actually like Adam and Adam and me, our jobs, you know, it's like, yeah, we work from home, but we got our hobbies. We, we got our other businesses, our other ventures and, Maybe we should add sports agent to our list of <laughs> yeah, things right. that we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you, what, what you find out when you you know when you're one of the smaller agencies is that the big boys will come and try and steal your clients when they become something, and that's the hard part of this business. Is you know you represent a kid for ten years and nobody knows who he is, and you do everything for that guy, and then one day you get a text message that says, "Hey, thanks I'm for leaving. everything. Uh, uh, I've decided to go another." with another agency and you're just like sitting there, you know, really? So there's really just not much loyalty and I'm an honest, loyal person and it's kind of a rough business if that's the type of person. You got to be out there trying to snipe players from other agents and all that. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, if that's your personality. You'd be good at, if you'd be good at, you know, introducing yourself into me and having a conversation and the minute you walk away, you, behind my back call my client and then yeah. it'd be the right industry for you oh interesting okay i know some people who are good at that yeah uh, i'm not <laughs> <laughs> and tell us about some of the big name players who you have represented and also who you currently represent yeah i don't want to tell you who i currently represent because the list is too short but uh have represented. plus plus we don't want to tell people who to poach yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I've, true. I've made so many enemies on social media, they'll just all start going after my guy. Um, <laughs> but like I said, I've represented Darren Oliver, represented Sean Kelly, Mark Lowe, Ian Kinsler, Joey Butler, Colt Hines, some guys you guys may not know, Ryan Franklin. I know I'm missing some guys, but those are just Michael Choice. Yeah, yeah. Dylan well, Bundy, Archie Bradley. So quite a few guys. Very nice. Well, Jeff Fry, retired MLB player, player agent with Fry McCann Sports. He's also a spokesperson for Save the Game. The website is savethegameus.com. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us on the Work From Home show. Do you have any final thoughts you'd like to add or anything else you'd like to talk about? No, I mean, I'd like people to check out my Shigon movement, uh, Shigon Nation on Twitter, at Capital O three J Fry has some pretty. There's a lot of former players on there that that uh, you know we talk baseball and we you know gets pretty uh, animated at times, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, I would like the people to go to the Save the Game US dot com website and sign the petition. And you know we're trying to get as many signatures as we can to to let Major League Baseball know that there's a problem out there, but we want to help them come up with some solutions on how to fix the game. Jeff Fry, we greatly appreciate your coming on the Work From Home Show. To all our listeners, check us out at workfromhomeshow.com. That's www.workfromhomeshow.com. Get on our mailing list. We're always sending out goodies, free stuff to our listeners, including my book, Fifty Shades of Marketing. If you have any questions, if you want to leave us a comment, hello at workfromhomeshow.com. Hello at workfromhomeshow.com is our email address. Follow us on social media. Leave us a review on whatever podcasting platform you utilize. And until next week, keep on working from home.